And um, I'm going to give you a thought that's on my heart. And this will help you either today or someday. Either today or someday. I want to preach this morning on a sleep on a pillow. Look at Mark chapter 5 and verse number 36. Four. Mark chapter 4 and verse 36, I'm sorry. Mark chapter 4 and verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was. I've always liked that. Take him as he is. Take him as he is. You know how you take Jesus Christ? Just like he is. You don't change him into the modern day hippie Jesus that sits on the beach and smokes pot. You take him as he is. Lord of lords, king of kings, perfect, sunless, sinless son of God manifest in flesh. Take him as he is. That's how you get him. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm. Now listen, people. That's coming in your life. There arose a great storm. There always comes a great storm. If you are not in a storm, get ready because you're going to be. If I go five years and everything in our family goes good, I get worried and sick. I mean, we're, something's wrong. Uh, every few years, something's going to happen that just devastates. And usually it don't take that long. Shake you up. There arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat. You ever had that happen to you? into the ship so that it was now full. And look what Jesus was doing while this was going on. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. That's the title of my sermon, asleep on a pillow. And they wake him and say, say to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Lord, we're about ready to die out here and you're laying back there asleep. Now look, people, you know what that's a picture of, don't you? You're going through all hell broke loose in your life. You don't know what you're going to do or how you're going to make it or where you're going to turn. And it's, Lord, you don't even care? What are you doing? Why, you're asleep. Lord, help me. Where are you? That's what they're saying. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest not that we perish. Verse 39, look what he did. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. There's somebody here this morning, that's what you need. You need the Lord to speak peace to your situation. Amen? Amen. And he, he said unto them, why are you so fearful? Good question. How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? I look at that word pillow. He was asleep on a pillow. He wasn't just laid back over here with his head against the side of that old boards on that ship trying to snooze a little bit. He wasn't uh, back there in the back uh, with his hands like this trying to give him a little place and just, he wasn't just sitting back with his head against the, the wall. He was asleep on a pillow. Pillar, as we said all our life, but I'm trying to say it right. Uh, so you, you think I, I know how to spell. Uh, pillar, pillow, same thing. Uh, like window, winder, same thing. And, and he was asleep. It's, now, a pillow is something that is not normally. Pillar is a split between pillow and pillar. That way it gives me a little bit. And uh, a pillar, pillar is not something you would think you'd find on a boat. You'd think there'd be oars. You'd think there'd be sails. You'd think there'd be bait. You'd think there'd be anchors. But a pillar on a boat? Who took that thing on there? Reckon when they all got on, the Lord brought a pillar? You reckon, I'm going to take me a nap on here while we're going one side or the other. I've been up ministering. I don't know. Probably not. Probably somebody else brought it. He never had nothing really that was his. And maybe he used it. I don't know. But I, I would think, I didn't even know if they had pillows back in them days. 
but it's in the Bible several times about pillow. Tell me somebody back in Genesis 28 that went to sleep on a pillow. Jacob, remember him? When he seen, when he seen the ladder, it said, but his was a rock. I've stayed in that motel. Uh, uh, yeah, I, now, I hate a flat, soft pillow, but I don't want one that's like a rock or a rock. Have you ever tried to use a rock? For you? Ain't no wonder I had a vision. Uh, lay your head on that right there. I, it's, I'm not a very good sleeper. I'm a very light sleeper. And if I can't put my head down on something, honest to goodness, it's hard for me to sleep. When I go on a trip, uh, I, I don't see, I can sleep in the middle of a storm. I can't sleep in somebody else driving. I feel every bump. I feel every curve. You all right? You all right? Finally, I just get mad and said, pull over and let me drive. I don't want, to kill, I want you to kill me. And, and it's hard for me to, I looked up in pillows about four times in the Bible and in the Old Testament, back in Ezekiel 13, it said women sewed them things. So they sewed up a pillow, the definition of a pillow if, 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 if you want it, is, a, is like a, some cloth, skin, or something stuffed with something that's soft for the very purpose of cushioning your head so you can sleep. I don't see how he could sleep. I guess he had, he had it fixed up on, on, with a ship being tossed. I've, I've been on two that was like that. Well, three, actually. Well, actually, I was down in Florida preaching, and this, they said, now, they usually put me in a motel, and I was preaching, and they said, now, Brother, Brother Castle, that's what they call him, they said, uh, this man in our church owns a, a yacht, like a yacht, and he said, uh, he's going to let you sleep on that yacht. And I said, cool, I've never done that before. Don't think I've ever even been on a yacht. And, uh, uh, and they said, okay, and he had it parked. They have these little inlets where they don't actually live on the ocean, but they have like an inlet, like a little water that comes down here and turns curved, and then there's houses on both sides. That's, you know how it is down there in South Florida. They had one of them, and they got it tied up, and they said, now, I went in there. They said, now, here, here's your shower. I was too big to get in that shower. I don't see how in the world. Uh, pe people, I mean, I was like this, brother. I mean, here's the bathroom. You open a little door about that big, and you have to look at it and then remember it and go backwards and know when to sit down. That's how big it was. I'm not kidding. I thought, my goodness, I don't see how big. And, and I'm, I'm pretty little. And, and I thought, Lord, have mercy. Both elbows is hitting the walls in here. And then they said, I went down steps. I went down steps, and they said, here's your bedroom. Nice little bed in there. And I thought, ain't we underwater? Because, you know, I knew where the water level was. Like the water level's right here. In the, I don't know about that. I was sleeping. I don't know if I can do this. Uh, knowing that water is right there above your head. I said, well, if there's a leak or something. No, it's things fine. And, and I laid down in there, and I thought, this is cool, man. I'm sleeping on a yacht. I'm like a rich person. And I laid down there uh, like that, and it wasn't too cool. And I, I, every time I'd not go to sleep, it would go, oh, oh. I thought, we're, having a, we're gonna roll me out of this thing. I'm gonna hold on. Tie me in here. Uh, put on a seatbelt and go to bed. Things are bad. And, and, I, and, I, and I thought, I don't like this feeling. And I was in one one time when uh, we were somewhere down near, below, below the coast of Florida and a ship, there was, it was a boat, about as far along, the whole thing about as long as this church. There's probably about 80 of us on there and a big storm hit and that thing started going up like this and you could see the water right there, buddy. And then it'd go whoo, up like this, like one of them rides at Dollywood. But it wasn't, no, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't, you didn't feel that safe. And you look down there, I thought, Lord, have mercy if I ever get off of here. I will never step foot on nothing like this again. I said, this is crazy. And it's scary. That's the way it was. And I want to tell you something, people. Life is like that. Sometimes you can be sailing along just fine. The sun's shining. Everything great. I've, I've been beat and been in so many storms, I'm just about scared to enjoy anything. And that ain't right. Have you, you ever been like that? You're almost afraid to relax. You're almost afraid to sit down and think, glory to God, life sure is good. About that time, you better look out. Uh, somebody said this. They said, if you think everything's going fine, you have obviously overlooked something. 
Because you in this world, there's going to be clouds. In this world, I don't care how pretty the sun is out there today, you hang around here a few days, and that sky's going to get black, and that lightning's going to flash, and that thunder's going to hit, and buddy, it'll, tell you, it'll scare you half to death. Storms are coming. Storms are coming. Do you hear me today? You are not going to get through life without storms. If you're a Christian here this morning, you say, well, I'm in the boat with the Lord. So was they. They was in the boat with the Lord, but the storm still came. Amen. Now that fellow that sells them my pillows, you see that guy sells them my pillows. I don't know why his pillows are better than everybody else's. He claims they are, and they claim that guy sold like 80,000 of them things. 80,000. Has anybody in here been sucked uh, 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 Bought one of them. I, I'm just kidding. There's one. There's that. Now they might be good. Let me borrow it, Brandon, before I buy one. Now, are they really? Well, I'll not try one. I bet they're a hundred dollars too, ain't it? $39. I, I, my pillow. Uh, but I've, I've heard people say I wouldn't sleep on somebody else's pillow. Really? We had uh, somebody had some mattresses at a sale like a yard sale or something. I said, well, they got some down there. I said, I ain't buying a mattress somebody else slept on. You ever been to a motel? You ever go to the Myrtle Beach, the nastiest people in the world slept on them last night. You better think about that before you start getting so uppity and big shot. I mean, nasty people. But anyway, uh, they, they, he had them in pillows, and he lay asleep on the pillow. They say if you dream about a pillow, you know, people interpret dreams. Uh, they say if you dream about a pillow, that means that uh, you're going on a short trip or not have a lot of money. Uh, uh, dream about a pillow. If you dream about a white pillow, that means you're going you're going to be you're alone. You're single. If you dream about a, a black pillow or a dark colored pillow, that's what the book said, you're headed for divorce. That's awful, isn't it? I don't believe all that. Or it might mean, like that one fellow said, he, he dreamed, he was real hungry, starving, went to bed, and he dreamed he ate a 100-pound marshmallow. He woke up, and his pillow was gone. <laughs> that might be the interpretation of your dream. But quickly, quickly, just three quick things about this, and then we'll go. Number one, I want you to notice the Lord's poise in the storm. Poise in the storm. It was a great storm. But the Lord was poet, complete. He didn't get scared. He didn't get upset. The Lord, them, them decided, oh, no, what are we going to do? Oh, no, what are we going to do? What are you going to do? Listen, people, I've, I've been through a whole lot of stuff. It's a miracle of God Almighty that I'm standing here preaching this morning. There ain't but one way you can explain me. God must have kept me through these years. I, there is no way in the world that I, I mean, you talk about many dangerous toils and snares. I, I tell, there, I'm, you name it, you, any kind of unbelievable situation that, that I've been through all kinds of things. I've been through all kinds of pain. And all, listen, I've walked the floor in my house before, bawling my eyes out, and I'd go this way and start crying, and I'd go back that way and start crying, and, and then pictures on the wall makes you cry worse, so you take them down and stick them under the couch uh, somewhere and then and then you hurt you can't go to sleep but you don't want to wake up uh, you, you, you ever been there you ever been there where you just think you cannot make it and you just hurt so bad on the inside and you just think I can't make it I can't make it that's the way those storms of life come but I'm telling you the Lord Jesus Christ even though he was asleep physically on that pillar he knew everything that was going on he knew exactly what was going to happen the Lord knew before they ever got on that boat what was going to take place and I'm telling you this morning glory to God hallelujah the Lord knew before your storm hit that it was going to hit he already had a plan to bring you through it he already had his, his mind made up how he's going to help you the poise in that storm was absolutely amazing Somebody said they had a big storm up in Pennsylvania and, uh, they, and, the, and it, it was real bad as ice storm. And then the forecast come and said, the forecast is 10 more inches of snow tomorrow in, Pit, in Pittsburgh. And there was already cars abandoned, factories had closed, people missing work, losing money, and the forecast said 10 more inches of snow. Sometimes it's like that. Sometimes like life is like that. Sometimes, hey, who am I talking to? 
And sometimes uh, right about the time you think, Lord, I'm glad that's over, there's another big one coming right behind it. And you think, Lord, please, not another one. Lord, please. And sometimes you wonder, God, do you know what you're doing? God, do you even remember me? God, do you know that I'm here? God, where are you? God, I, why does this have to happen to me? Ten more inches on top of that. You hear somebody give a big testimony of how wonderful everything is. You think, what? What am I doing wrong? I'm, maybe I'm not saved. No, you're in that boat. If you're in that boat with the Lord, if you're right with God, that's all you got to do. I heard testimonies this week. Honest to goodness, it was hard to sit there and listen. I heard a lot of preachers this week. I heard a preacher, I won't mention their names because this will be all on the internet and everything. A good friend of mine. He's in a revival preaching. Off some more preaching in a revival. His son called him. He said, Daddy, Mama has left with another man. And he said, I thought he's joking. He said, Oh, shut up. You don't need to be talking like that. And he said, No, really? Daddy, she's gone. He's off preaching somewhere. Had no idea. No clue. But you talk about somebody that'll knock you off of your feet. Try, try that sometime. He said, Dad, she's gone. She went off with a man. He's tore all two pieces, had to stand up and preach. Been married 27 years. Kids, kids grown. And he went through all of that and told how that happened. And then told, right, his daddy shot him. Daddy shot him three times. They got in a big fuss and his daddy's drunk, something like that. His daddy put three bullets in him. And he said on the way to the hospital, he's in the, in the ambulance on the way to the hospital, he heard the paramedics talking. And they said, he's not going to make it. He's not going to make it. They took him to the hospital. He said somehow or another he survived that night. And he said the nurse come up and the next day and she said, sir, I don't know how in the world you're here. He said, most times somebody with one bullet where yours is, 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 dies, you've got three in you. I don't know. I, don't, I can't explain this. He said, I can. Amen. He said, somebody's taking care of me. And he witnessed that woman. And she got in church after that. That woman started going to church. Amen. And then he said, a few years ago, after he made it through all of that, after that storm, go, and for all you people that have never been through that, that marriage mess, I hope and pray to God you never have to go through it. And I would give you one little word of advice. Be real careful how you judge other people. Amen. Be real careful. But it, Lord, I will put you in that place one day and you might not do as good as they did. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's wor harder than you think it is. And sometimes people do stupid stuff and ain't no excuse for it. Them disciples had no right to go jump ship or go jump on another ship or, or worship some false god, or get drunk, they said, Lord, we're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. And you know what that preacher said after that? He said, he said, I got the call one night. His son, now you know who I'm talking about, most of you, who was a missionary for years. He got a phone call. He said, your son's been killed in an accident. He said, no. He said, no. No. And he said, train hit him. And he went down there to the funeral home. He said, I, 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 he said, I want to see my boy. They said, you don't want to see him. You don't want to see him looking like this. Like he looks. He said, I want to see him. They said, no, you don't want to remember him. Like he looks, the train tore him all to pieces. You think a storm can't come hit your life? You think everything's going right in your life today? I hope and pray to God it is. But listen, you don't know what you'll be in this time tomorrow. None of us. I ain't trying to sound negative this morning, but buddy, that's just the way it is. You know what that book said? That book said, man is born under trouble as the sparks fly upward. You know what that verse means? Build 10,000 fires and watch how many times sparks go up. Every time. 
That's how sure it is that storms will come to your life. And he went through the marriage mess and then buried his boy. Another preacher stayed in the... You know, people hard on preachers. They think they're supposed to be perfect and they're this, that, and that. Listen, you ought to walk a mile in what some of God's men walked in, their shoes. You might change your mind. Another preacher told me this week, he said, Brother Danny, he said, I thought everything was fine. I thought everything was great. His wife done the same thing. Took off. Left him. He said, I got to where I didn't want to live. He said, here I was a preacher. He said, I got, he said, I didn't preach for two years. And he said, I got out. And he said, I just, everything was just, he said, I said, I'm just going to end it. And he said, I got a pistol. And I got that pistol loaded. He said, I sat down and I wrote my mom and dad a letter. And told them I was sorry and I loved them. He said, I wrote my kids a letter and said, I'm sorry and I love you. Sorry I couldn't make it. He said, I had all them letters wrote out. I planned it out. I put that pistol right here underneath my chin because he read up on it and, and he said, that's how you're supposed to blow your brains out. And he said, I put that pistol right there and he said, I'm just going to end it all. He said, I can't live. I can't make it through this. And he said his daddy had been sick. Daddy had had a heart attack. And uh, he said uh, he's just recovering, almost died, and he just recovered some. And he said, right when he got ready to pull that trigger, the telephone rang. He picked the phone up and he said, yes. He said he recognized the number and he thought it must be an emergency. And he said it was his daddy on the other end. He said, <sighs> he said son, is everything all right? Is everything all right? He said, I have a strange burden to call you. He said, daddy, why are you breathing so hard? He said, me and mama's in Walmart. And he said something come over me and said call and named his name. And he said I run out of that store. And he said I run out to the car and grabbed the phone. He's going, son, everything all right? And it snapped him into reality. He thought, Lord, I can't do this. My daddy needs me. My mama needs me. Suicide's the most selfish thing that a person can do. You're, you don't think of nobody but yourself. You forget about all those that love you and need you. And he put that gun down. And now he's pastoring a church today doing good. But the storm's over. There's poise in that storm. Listen, people. I, I know this is unusual for me to do this. What about the peace in the ship? The peace in the ship. The waves beat in it, brother. The waves beat in it. Last thing I'll say is the predictability of the Savior. The passengers were terrified. But he arose. And they woke him and said, Lord, do you care? Do you care? Now, that's not, a, that's not the right kind of question. Don't ever ask the Lord, do you care? If he didn't care, you'd, you'd been in hell a long time ago. He cares. Just cause he don't move when you ask him to move. Just cause he don't jump when you holler the first time. Just cause you may think he's forgotten you does not mean. Now here's where people mess up. When you get into a mess, instead of waiting on him to get up and solve your problem, you go out and try to fix things up yourself in another way. And there's where you get in trouble. Where you get in trouble is you try to say, well, I can fix this. He ain't, Lord ain't going to help me. I'll just go, you know, I'll just go get drunk. Their, their best bet was to stay in that ship and wait on him. And that's exactly what they've done. And the Lord helped them. Now look, if you're going through a storm this morning, I know it's, it's the flesh wants to just turn to the world and sin and everything else to try to get help. I'm telling you today, I'm telling you, if you never listen to anything a preacher said, hear what I'm saying. If you're going through a storm this morning, you turn to the Lord with all your heart. You hang on with all your might. You believe in him. You pray to him. You trust him. And wait on him. He will. Every time I've ever waited on him, he delivered me. Every time I've ever jumped a gun, I got myself in a mess. The predictability of the Savior. You know he's going to get up and help you. You know he's going to. Calm down. 
He don't always do it when you want. He don't always do it how you want. But he'll do it. May not be your time schedule. Y'all have heard some of my testimony. I mean, God's been good to us. I ain't got no gripes or complaints. There was a period of about two years when our whole family blew all to pieces. My sister got cancer, and she's 35 years old. She was my oldest. She was about three years older than me. I was 32, somewhere along in there. And she got and she got cancer, and they took her, and, and she went through all these treatments and stuff, and you know that the the torture of that as a and she had real thick head of hair like my mom did, and so she she didn't lose her hair, but it, a lot of it came out, and she 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 suffered. Sandy was very very healthy. She run these marathons. Lord, I don't, you know I run all, every day, but I I mean three k, five k, that's crazy, and. Uh, um, and, and she would run these races. She played the piano. She wrote music. She wrote songs. She led the little kids' choir. I mean, just, God, I could write, sing, dance. She could do every dance they'd come out with on American Bandstand when we was growing up. The eternal teenager Dick Clark was her mentor until she got right with God. And you know what? When she got cancer, the doctor told Mom, said, this is really... Her health is going to work against her because her body's so strong it's going to fight it, fight it. And that's exactly what happened. Two years. They got rid of it. Since she's 38, come back on the 4th of July. She is laying up on her little house up on Buck Creek, Bub Marion, up Highway 80, up above Lake Tahoma. So y'all been up that way. And we was all in her house I didn't have to preach that week because it was 4th of July and I was preaching somewhere every week. My girls was little. Carrie was, I don't know, just 12, 13, something like that. Chris and Corey was real little. And we was at their house. And Daddy would take a popsicle and put it around her lips. Try, she was going <sighs> to get them death rattles. He took that popsicle and started putting it. I said, my daddy do that. Daddy wasn't no, he wasn't no nurse. He wasn't no soft person. But he'd sit there and stick a popsicle in her mouth trying to get her to eat a little bit, and she would. And I said, I'm going to go in here and lay down. I went in one of the boys' room, laid down, took a nap, and I heard mom screaming, running through the house. And I never heard mom scream like that. She was going, Whoa! And we got up, and she's gone. And she told me, she said, now, Danny, I want you to preach at my funeral. And I said, I want you to talk to my boys. And she had it all planned out. Everything was ready. And that storm came. And I did preach a funeral. And I'm telling you, the Lord got up out of that boat, or out of that hinder part of that ship, and said, peace be still. Everything smoothed out. That wasn't the last storm. And it won't be the last one. Listen, as we get older, more storms are coming. I like, I like, I like what Dr. Ruckman said. He's putting his memoirs on him. He's 94 years old. And they said, what do you got to say, preacher? He said, getting old stinks. But it does. It's downhill. You, you pass 40, brother, it's downhill from there on. Just get ready for it. Get ready for it. I'm going to tell you something this morning. If you're in a storm, everything can be going great. Y'all come on, get that song ready for me. Everything can be going great. And just like that, everything can change. But remember me telling you, stay in the ship. Stay in the ship. Stay in the ship, and it'll work out for you. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. God's speaking to your heart this morning. If he is, the best thing you could possibly do today would be to get down here in this altar and say, Dear Lord, I'm going through a hard time, and if I ain't one's coming, 
Just help me to stay in the boat with you. Not jump ship and do something stupid. Get in this altar this morning. Father, help us today. I beg you. I beg you. Help somebody today to stay with you during this storm. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Come on. Come on. It was such a lovely day. You ever had a day like that? When you thought everything was all right? You thought everything was fine? But it just likes that. Everything changes. Everything changes. Come on. Come on, sir. Come on, Mom. Come on, Daddy. Come on, young man. Let's get in this altar this morning and put it on the altar for Jesus. Woo! Yeah. Suddenly, without warning. Amen. Amen. Storm surrounding my life. But even in the storm. I can feel the calm. Yeah, here's the reason why. Woo! Yeah, glory to God, say, Cause I know the peace speaker. Yeah, come on. I know him by name. Just get out of your seat, God. Just get out of your seat. Get, out of your get your life right with God, friend. Get your life right with God. Amen. Yes, I know him by name. Put it on the altar this morning. Put it on the altar. Come on. Come on. Another man. Oh, to God. The power of this ring. Going through the storm. Going through the storm. Stay in the boat, brother. Stay in the boat. Thank God. Stay in the boat. Stay in the boat. Become the strongest wind. Listen. That's why I never worry. Things come my way. Glory to God, it's good to be saved. Yeah, he's here this morning. So I can smile and sing. Glory to God, say it now. I know the peace speaker. Glory to God, know it by name. my battles and troubles I didn't always make an A sometimes I got a B or a C or even a D minus but every time I every time that I stayed with the Lord and stayed right he always spoke peace to my storm Amen. it's the hardest thing in the world to sit and do nothing with your whole life blowing all to pieces right. you want to fix it you want to fix it that's where you make your mistake. That's where you want to make your mistake if you're not real careful. Let him stand up. Buddy, he speaks peace. And God, you'll be a better person. Trouble 
will do one of two things to you. It'll make you bitter or it'll make you better. Amen. And that depends on you. You can become a bitter person. I know a lot of them. Or you can become a better person. And that's what you want to do. I don't know who God's helped this morning, but I'm telling you, this is on my heart so heavy this morning that I had to get it off my chest. And so you, you leave here. We've, we've not just met this morning. We've had church in here today. We've had church in here today. Now, that's worth coming to. That's why people drive from way up my estates for to come. You know, if you can get where God is, Amen. Right. I'll get you some help. Okay? Now, listen. We'll be back.